Hello and welcome to this tutorial on TweenGMS for GameMaker Studio 2. In this lesson, we will be looking at tween event callbacks. These allow you to call scripts or user events when a specific tween event occurs. Let's dive right in and see how we can make use of them. For this lesson, I've added a test object to our test room. We will be using this to set up all our tweens and event callbacks. So let's go ahead and open up our test objects properties. Here you can see that I've added a key pressed space event. And inside this event, I have our tween being fired. It's simply going to ease our object from its exposition to 200 pixels to the right. And we're going to assign the unique tween ID to this variable t. So let's just get, for reference, let's just play this and see what it looks like. And here you can see that when I press space, our tween plays out from its current position to 200 pixels to the right over a duration of two steps. But now what we want to have happen is we want to use an event callback. We're going to have something happen when this tween finishes. In order to do that, we're going to have to use a script called tween add callback. So let's go back to our press space event. And below this fire tween, we are going to call the script tween add callback. And now the first argument to tween add callback is the tween we want to have add a callback to. In this case, we've added, uh, we set t as this. Uh, as this tween here, so we can simply use t. Next, we need to set um, the event we want to have this callback happen for. So we need to use one of the tween ev macros. As you can see, there's a list here of the different events available, such as when a tween is paused, or resumed, or stopped. But in this case, we're going to use tween ev finish. And this is this event occurs when the tween finishes, which um, which is perfect for what we need here. The next argument we need to set the target, like in the tween fire scripts, we need this um, is the object or instance we want to have associated with the callback. So in this case, we just want to have our test object call this script. So we're just going to put ID, and in most cases, ID works just fine. But you could also supply an object index or a different instance's ID altogether. Next, we need to set the script you want to have called. And as you can see, I have a script already here called hello world. If I open it up, this hello world script simply shows the message hello world. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write in hello world as our script and finish up the uh, script call. And now when we press play, we can see what happens. Again, I'm going to press space for our tween to play out. And there you go. As you can see, a message has popped up. Hello world. Our our callback script has fired successfully. Now that's great and all, but what if we wanted to print a custom message instead? Well, for that, we will go back to our callback script and change it to one to another one I've called show message. And here I have the script here. As you can see, show message takes a single argument and passes it in to show so we can show a custom message. So to do that, I'm going to replace hello world with show message. And now you can he see down here that this tween add callback script takes optional arguments. And these optional arguments are, are arguments that we want to pass to our script. In this case, we want to pass a custom message. So we can put in a new message and we can write, this is a custom message. Now let's go ahead and try this out again and see what happens. And once again, I'm going to press space and our tween will play out. There we go. This is a custom message. And there we have a custom message being played out. This adds a lot of flexibility and control. So if you want to supply more arguments to a script, you can simply add more arguments as needed. Now let's go ahead and change our fired tween to use tween mode bounce instead. And now let's play our tween and see what happens. Now when I press space, our tween will play, but now it's going to bounce back to the finish, and then it plays our finish message. This is because the finish event only happens once for the for the tween mode bounce when it, fin when it comes back and finishes. But what if we want to have another event so we press space and have an event happen here, right there, when it bounces? Well, we can do that as well. And for that, we can use the continue event, which executes when our tween bounces back. So let's come back to here, and we're going to add a new callback. 
And this time we are going to write out tween add callback. Again, we want to use t. This time for the event, we're going to use tween ev continue. Again, we'll set our target as id. And we're going to again show message. But this time we're going to write out the message bouncing back. So let's give that a try and see how that looks. And now when I play our tween, it plays out and it bounces, showing our message. And then when it plays back, it goes back to the start and finishes and says, this is our custom message. Perfect. All right. Here I, I will note that the play modes, tween mode patrol, tween mode loop, and tween mode repeat, that they do not have a finish event. Instead, they will always call the continue event when they patrol, loop, or repeat. I'll now change our tween's mode to tween mode patrol to highlight this. So let's just get rid of these. And let's change this to tween mode patrol. And this is going to have our tween bouncing back and forth between the start and destination values. So now when I press space, we have this bouncing back script argument call. And again, it says bouncing back. So it keeps it keeps calling the tween ev continue event and it never actually finishes. So we just keep getting the one script call for bouncing back. All right, well, there's one last thing to cover before we finish this lesson. You can also use user events as callbacks. For that, we can use the script tween add callback user. It works the same as tween add callback except that it takes a user argument instead of a script. So we will write out, again, our tween will be t. Again, we'll use tween ev continue. And we'll set the target as id. And this is where we select the user event we want to use. In this case, we're just going to use user event 0. And we will now go back and add this event, this user 0 event here as add event, other user events. 0. And here we're just going to write out show message hello from user event 0. Great. So with that, let's now check out our game and see how it looks. So we still get this bouncing back uh, callback script. But we also get the hello from user event zero. So now we're getting two callbacks for this event because we've actually assigned two, the one with, by the script and one with the user event callback. So now when our tween keeps bouncing, we're going to get these two calls each time. Now this shows that you can actually add multiple callbacks to a single tween event. This allows for greater flexibility when setting up your tweens. Anyhow, this is it for this basic overview of tween event callbacks. I encourage you to check out the other tween events and understand when they would be used. You can also find more details about the various tween events and tween GMS's included documentation. I hope you have found this tutorial useful, and I look forward to you joining along in future lessons. As always, happy tweening.